Hi, this screencast is just going to tell you a little bit about how to use forms in your Google breakout room. First, I'm going to show you a few of my examples, and then we'll go through kind of how to just set up the basics of a Google form. Um, so this, um, the Google forms are super helpful because uh, you can do just different types of codes. So when you go to a normal breakout room, they often have different types of locks that you might have to use numbers or letters or even directions to break out or open that lock. So these are the different pieces to the final breakout room. So as they unlock these clues, they'll keep track of their answers to finally take to the final clues form to break out. So this um, is the letter code. Each answer corresponds with a letter that they would want to keep track of. Whichever answer here is correct, they would write down that letter and take it with them. Same with all the rest of these. When they're finished with this form, they would go look for more clues. So they might move on to the number code. So here I have numbers corresponding with the answers. Of course, with math, you could just use the number as the answer. Um, and so they would keep track of these numbers as they went through the problems. And then here's how I chose to do direction codes. For each of the answers, you're able to add a picture. And so I added a picture of up, down, left, or right. And so whichever one was correct, they would want to keep track of which direction that was. Okay. Um, there's also some other options. If you don't like using the number codes or the letter codes and you want to just give them a phrase or a word, that might be the clue. Um, here's how I did that as well. Um, so I'm going to take advantage of using the sections in forms. I'll get into that a little bit more later. Um, but basically, each of these answers was a short answer text. And so they had to answer with their words or numbers. So to get this question correct, they had to type exactly the right answer into the blank. When they did that, it would give them that validation that they got it correct and they could move on to the next question. If they didn't type exactly 27 into this problem, then it would give them this clue over here. So remember to round to the nearest hole for this answer. Um, so the same with all the rest of these. It, they would have to type exactly what I typed into my answer in order to get it right to move on. In order to do this as well, they would, you would need to make sure that the question is required, otherwise it won't prevent them from moving forward. So to just ensure that they would have to get it right before they can move on, make sure they're all required so you can use that response validation. All right, so then right here is where you would add a section. So a long time ago I added this section down here because I wanted them to have this specific phrase in order to move on. And that was their clue that they would write down and take to the final clues. Um, with this, I also was able to just kind of give them a hint of where the next clue was to be found. And so I added a picture and told them where to go. So this is another way you could make the clue literally anything you want it to be for the students. Um, so once they have all of their clues and they're ready to go and see if they would actually break out, then this is what the final clues should look like. Um, so with this, um, I did this with a subject, different subject areas, and so they would type their math clue right here. And again, just as my last um, form showed, I did short answer text so that they would have to type their answer correct. Um, it would have to be exactly right, so if they were just trying to guess, it wouldn't work. Um, and then over here, if they didn't um, somehow have the right clue, this would give them the hint. Okay, so when they have all of their clues ready to go and they have them all correct, again, they need to be required, then when they click Next, it would show them that they escaped from the island, and so then they knew that they finally broke out. Okay, these are my examples. Of course, you can go back and look at them if you need some ideas. Um, now I want to go into just how to start from scratch, how to even start making a form. So first you want to make sure you're in your Google Drive. You'll click New, scroll down to More, and click Forms. When you click this, it'll open up to this screen. So you can change the color up here. 
if you want, if you want to change it to a picture instead of um, just a plain color, you can do that. You can upload photos. Um, so there's a lot of different options with that. Okay, so just to kind of make it a little bit more visually appealing, you can give it a title. Okay, and so whenever you make it a title, it'll automatically pop up here as well. Um, you can give them some directions if you feel like your students might need some guidance. Um, and then here's where we start adding our questions. So for our final clues form, the first thing might be the letter code. Um, you can kind of give them some clues of type in all caps, whatever you want to do there to help them make sure they type the correct way. Um, it'll automatically kind of change it to short answer. If you feel like you need to add a picture, you can do that right here. Um, you'll want to make sure that all your questions are required so that they have to answer all parts of the survey. Then when you make it required, click on these three dots right here, and it'll give you a, a few more options. So the response validation is what I'm looking for. Um, basically now they will have to have, you have these different options that their text will have to have in it. And so you can choose a number, a text, length, whatever you, your clue is, what would best fit for it. Most of mine, the text works the best. And so now over here, it has to contain whatever I type into this box. So, so if they don't type exactly this letter, then it won't let them continue on. And so right here, custom error text. When they get an error in what they're typing, this is the message that you might want to send them. This is um, probably one of the frustrating things for students. And so this is where they might need a lot of guidance and help. So if you want to make sure that you give them just the clues and stuff that they will need to see why their answer was not accepted, um, that will help them out. Okay, so we did the letter code. Then we would want to add another question. So do that by adding the plus sign on the right. And maybe the next is the direction code. Okay, again, it'll probably automatically change it to short answer, but if not, you can click this drop down and choose what type of question. Short answer usually works best. You want to make this question required, and then that response validation will show up. If you don't make it required, if you notice when you click on the three dots, I guess that response validation could still be there, but they could click past the direction code without getting it correct. So if you want it to be something that they definitely get correct, you want to make sure it's required. And so for the direction code, they will have stew type up. Okay, so you would do the same thing for however many pieces you have to your breakout room. Um, if you're wanting something more that would take maybe the whole time, I would suggest having at least four pieces. Um, if not, if you just want it to be a short review, only two codes might be all it takes for your students. Um, so once you have all of your clues in there with the answers in there, you can click over here to add a section. So this is going to be where it takes them to after they get these codes correct. They'll be allowed to click next. So the title, you can give them any message that you think they would um, find useful. Over here on the right, you can add a picture, add a video, you can add more text, you can add more questions. Um, there's a lot of different options here. Um, so I added a picture for mine to just go with my theme. You can search in the picture to add it, you can upload an image. Um, but I just searched right into Google a sunset over the ocean to show that they escaped from the island. Okay. If you have directions for what they want, what they should do next in your class, you could type that here.
Um, so that's pretty much it. Just before you actually make, finalize your form, you do want to probably go back and double check those response validations. That's the big key for the students to make sure they get that right. Um, so when you're ready to share it with your students, again, you can go back to the Google Sites video and that'll show you how to add a form to your Google site. Um, or if you're wanting to just get the link, you can click send up here. Well, I hope this video is helpful. If you need to rewind any spot, feel free.